Yes, we know number one, but who are the top five quarterbacks in the ACC? Next to Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. All right, we're talking ACC football here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We're joined by Ryan Cantor. You can join him and the rest of the crew there at Shaken the Southland, breaking down at Clemson, the national champions, of course. Ryan, how you doing tonight? Good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, quite a bit of talent uh, lost to the NFL draft uh, out of the ACC quarterback ranks from 2018. Daniel Jones, Eric Dungy, Ryan Finley. Uh, three of the more prolific quarterbacks at their respective schools all time lost to the NFL, but um, a semblance of talent coming back. I don't want to say that it's overwhelming, but it certainly is at the number one spot. Yeah, for sure. I, th I think it's pretty unanimous that Trevor Lawrence uh, coming back for Clemson and true sophomores is, is the top quarterback in the conference. He had a ridiculous 30 to four touchdown to interception ratio. He had uh, over 3,200 yards passing and didn't even start for the first couple games. Uh, missed over half the Syracuse game as well. Um, and the thing to note is that he got a lot better as the year went on. The way he looked against Texas A&M versus how he looked against Alabama, two different players. Now he comes back with an entire year experience, college football playoff experience, and an entire offseason. Um, I think I think he'll, he'll be the best quarterback in the ACC. I, I don't think that'll be too close, assuming he stays healthy. And I think it's him and Tua are really on a tier of their own for the best in the entire country. So now we've got a debate. So when you look at the rest of the quarterback play in the ACC, considering the guys that were lost that I just mentioned, uh, you, you could juggle these guys in any sort of way and uh, make an argument for two through five. Yeah. Um, losing Eric Dungy for Syracuse, um, he's a big name to go out. And Tommy DeVito's a guy that folks are excited about, um, and probably for good reason, and I, and I like him too. But I think there's a clear number two. And Trevor Lawrence is kind of on tier, tier of his own, but I think Bryce Perkins from Virginia, um, to, maybe not to quite the same extent, but to some extent, maybe on a tier of his own as well in the ACC, is the second best quarterback. He's a senior. Um, I'm high on uh, Virginia this year. They would be the seventh team in seven years to win the Coastal, and I think they could do it. Um, he ran for over 900 yards and nine touchdowns last year. He also had a 64% completion percentage, which is really strong considering he threw for 2,680 yards. So, um, not like a game manager who rarely threw it, 25 passing touchdowns as well. So um, pretty pretty well-rounded quarterback in Virginia. I think I think they could have a pretty solid year. So after that, I have uh, the aforementioned Tommy DeVito. Uh, that's a lot of projection there, obviously. We've, we've only seen him a couple times, but he did come in against uh, Florida State, and uh, they scored 24 points in the second half and beat Florida State. I know Florida State was um, obviously really bad last year, but – for Syracuse to beat Florida State is always a big win for them, and things were looking a little dicey when Eric Dungy went down, but uh, Tommy DeVito led him to a big win there. And then Eric, Eric Dungy was great, but he was having a bad game against UNC, and he got pulled uh, after they blew a big lead to the Tar Heels, and uh, DeVito led them. He threw three touchdowns in what was a double overtime win, so you know they had overtimes to, to collect those stats. But nevertheless, he led them to that victory. Obviously, he got kind of walloped against Notre Dame and, and was a blowout, but uh, I think he showed a lot of promise, so I think folks are high on, on Tommy DeVito, and that, that actually seems pretty fair. Um, based on some some posts that we had up on our site and some uh, conversation with Syracuse fans, they're really excited. They think he's a better fit for Dino Babers' offense. We'll see. I mean, to this point, Eric Dungy sort of is their offense, but, but they believe that this is more what that uh, – the Babers offense is built around, so so it should be a good fit. So I think he'll do pretty well. Um, I think folks are uh, the, the uh, S&P Plus, I think, is un overlooking Syracuse. Um, I think Vegas with their over-under, I think, is about six and a half. I think that's pretty low. So I, I like what Syrac Syracuse can do this year. I think Tommy DeVito could be good. After that, I have Jamie Newman from Wake Forest. Um, just because he's from Wake Forest, I think he gets overlooked. But he's got a pretty good combination of running ability, accuracy, um, he doesn't like totally have the job yet. Sam Hartman could totally win it. Um, after Kendall Hinton got suspended, uh, Sam Hartman took over and basically was just better and kind of won the job. And then Jamie Newman took over when Sam Hartman got hurt and he was great. So they could battle. Jamie Newman had the better spring game. I tend to think Jamie Newman will, will run with the job, but frankly, regardless of who wins, I, I, you can put like 
uh, insert Wake Forest QB here is the number four slot. And then I think at five, you kind of get into uh, where you can really debate it. I have James Blackman. Um, he redshirted last year, played in a couple games, but, uh, you know, he, he was okay as a, uh, as a freshman um, and then was he able to redshirt when Francois was back last year after being hurt. Um, but I think that time off give, gives him an opportunity to improve all that time, all those off seasons. I think we'll see him take a step and be pretty good. Um, some other names I think that you could easily debate. I'll just mention a few real quick and won't go into them, but Ryan Willis from Virginia Tech, Anthony Brown from Boston College, and Quentin Harris from Duke. All guys, you could easily make an argument to that number five spot that I, I would hardly debate. So, Ryan, I guess based on your analysis, the loser of the Wake Forest starting quarterback spot should be mighty upset because he would be the fifth the best quarterback in the ACC out of 14 quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, you can make that argument, but at the same time, like, there's a lot of backups for Clemson that would be starters at 10 or 12, you know, ACC teams. So that's that's just sort of how it goes. You, you could transfer if you want, but uh, they can bid their time. I, I think they're both pretty impressive quarterbacks. I'm going to go all over the ACC map for a number of notable players that aren't necessarily vying for a top five spot, but uh, either are vying for a starting spot on their respective team or have it locked down, such as Kenny Pickett, of course. Now, Pickett hit the scene two years ago at the conclusion of 2017. He actually came into the game against Virginia Tech on the road, had no playing experience, almost led a comeback win against Virginia Tech, who was a solid team that particular year with nine wins. Uh, took Pitt down to the goal line, almost scored the game-winning touchdown. Then he came back the next week at home against a Miami team that was undefeated, pulled off the upset. In neither game did he put up prolific numbers, but he certainly looked the part in regards to fitting a Pitt offense that likes to run first, mobile, made the right decisions, picked apart the defense, made the third-down conversion plays when he needed to, came back last year and really just didn't have much of a season. They just don't rely on the quarterback at all at Pitt. He threw for about 140 yards per game, just had a lot of pedestrian-type games, had one big game on the road against Wake Forest uh, late in the season, which helped propel Pitt to a division championship where he threw for 325 yards. But otherwise, um, less than 2,000 yards passing from a quarterback who played every game, including an ACC championship game, including a bowl game. And uh, Ryan, you probably have locked in on this number. I believe Kenny Pickett threw for all of eight yards in the ACC championship game. Yeah, they were overwhelmed. They looked really bad in that game. Um, the, th the other thing to mention about Kenny Pickett is he had a great running game to help him. So yes, they didn't rely on him, but think about guys like Jake Fromm and how much they benefit from having a great running game and a, and a strong offensive line. He had that and he wasn't ultra efficient or anything like that. So um, kind of a disappointment after what was sort of a flashy and spectacular freshman year. I think folks are really high on him. Um, but, you know, he's still young and I think – Kind of like James Blackman, he has a real chance to take a big step, and I think you, you can get pretty excited about his upside after after the freshman year now of experience. Josh Jackson was certainly in the mix as a top five quarterback in the ACC coming back from 2017. He left the program. Ryan Willis, or actually he got hurt. He has now left the program. Ryan Willis took over, uh, posted a pretty good season for a Virginia Tech team that uh, posted its first losing season in about 25 years, 24 touchdowns, nine interceptions and four rushing touchdowns for Ryan Willis. Uh, Matt McKay looks to take over for Ryan Finley, although that job is still up for grabs at NC State, a team that was third in the ACC in total offense and yards and and also points per game last season. Uh, Jawan passed at Louisville, has much development to undergo to uh, even come close to a top five list in the ACC after throwing 12 picks against eight touchdowns. An intriguing prospect at uh, North Carolina is Sam Howell, who um, flipped from Florida State, where he almost was assuredly uh, picked to go to Tallahassee, a top 100 recruit, four star, signs with Mac Brown, and could win the starting job at North Carolina in certain. Lee Tar Heel fans looking down the road want that to happen. A wild card of a projection here in that uh, Alex Hornibrook 
would seem to be a definite backup to James Blackman, considering the mobility, the starting experience of James Blackman, the knowledge of the program and the and the rapport with the receivers. Alex Hornibrook was not able to play in the spring. It's just getting to campus. But again, if um, if Florida State finds itself in an issue uh, at the quarterback spot with Blackman not uh, – progressing well, or if he gets hurt, obviously Alex Hornibrook, a guy that has a, a wealth of experience at Wisconsin, not overwhelming talent or statistics, but a guy that relied on, as you mentioned with uh, Kenny Pickett's situation at Pitt, one of the best running backs in college football with Jonathan Taylor at Wisconsin and a massive offensive line. But Alex Hornibrook uh, knows how to win football games and certainly turned in one of his finest performances two years ago in defeating uh, Miami at the Orange Bowl, where he ripped up the Canes for 300 plus yards and three touchdowns through the air and winning 34 23. So, just to uh, mention a few um, quarterbacks that could vie for the back end of that top five or are just interesting uh, storylines for 2019. Yeah, so two guys we didn't, or two teams we didn't mention is, is Lucas Johnson, Georgia Tech. I think Georgia Tech's, you know, in for a pretty deep rebuild. So I have him towards the bottom of the conference. The other one that um, I think folks will, there'll be a lot of volatility in where people rank them is Tate Martell or Nikosi Perry. Um, you know, when I first started putting together the list, everyone was so excited about Tate Martell. I assumed, you know, he's probably going to be sort of, you know, towards the top of this list. And the more I read, the more it seems like folks think he might not even start. Um, and Nikosi Perry, you know, after all the hoopla about Martell getting the waiver, he might not even start. So that could be an interesting situation in Miami. I, I'm not super high on Nikosi Perry um, after how much he struggled last year, but, but maybe he takes a step. Um, and then lastly, one interesting note, you talked about Josh Jackson at Virginia Tech. Um, you know, when he first uh, announced his transfer, it seemed like a big blow. But um, you know, after he burst on the scene, um, not last year, but the year before and played so well, he really faded down the stretch and didn't look that great. And then he got hurt. Um, so I don't know how big of a blow that is for Virginia tech really with, with Ryan Willis there still. Um, but it's going to be really interesting to see Maryland. Uh, they brought in Mike Loxley who called the plays, uh, in my opinion, very poorly for Alabama in that national championship game. He's known as a great recruiter and he's brought in a lot of transfers. They took Shaq Smith. He was a Clemson linebacker as well. So they've got some transfers there. Um, but we'll see if he can coach him up and, and win some games. Uh, he had obviously all the talent you could have at Alabama and he looked pretty bad in that championship game, but that's also against a very good opponent. Ryan Cantor from Shaking the Southland, breaking down his top five ACC quarterbacks for 2019 and helping us break down the overall uh, storyline on the quarterback position in the conference for this fall. Ryan, we appreciate you stopping by. Absolutely. Thanks.